the way to deal with the problems that exist in the outside world is to change your way of thinking and to change your emotional state. Essentially, the way to change the outside world is to change the inside world and to deal with the imbalances that very often exist within. But what does all this mean, change the inside world and you'll change the outside world? I can appreciate that it really does seem like esoteric mumbo-jumbo to some people. But what it's really all about, folks, is the removal of fear. Because everything within our societies is based on fear. The whole system is structured on fear. The whole way we live our lives is based on fear. And it's the failure to face this fear, it's the failure to face the shadow that causes the problems. Because you'll find that many of the people won't look at what's going on in the world and won't look at the political situation or deal with the political situation because they're afraid of the emotion that it brings up within them. They get all this horrible negative feeling and they think, oh no, I'm manifesting a negative reality. But what it is, it's just this fear that's rising up within them and it's their refusal to face the fear that allows the shadow to be perpetuated. And also, even with a lot of people in the truth movement, many people will look at what's going on and they scream out and they shout about all the problems that we're facing, but they do it from a centre of fear. They're not dealing with the problems, they're just shouting loudly and trying to get everybody else to be as scared as they are. And that's really not the way to solve anything either. So I think what I'm essentially attempting to say here is that very often, whether people are in a state of denial or whether people are in a state of total political awareness, such as many in the truth movement, very often both people are in the place that they're in and doing what they're doing because of a fear that they haven't faced within themselves. And all the people in the world who simply aren't aware of the real political situation that we face and simply aren't aware of the true facts surrounding the world, well, well, let's just say that they're doing what they've been programmed to do and they're feeling what they've been programmed to feel. But even so, you'll find that many of these people are also in a state of fear because that's the way our societies are structured. Even if they're not in a state of denial from fear, and they're not in a state of paranoia from fear, you'll find that they're on the treadmill in society because they're in a state of fear. Fear of paying the bills, fear of not keeping up with the Joneses, fear of what their neighbours will think about them, fear of being an underachiever, fear of whatever, folks. The whole system is designed to keep us in some form of fear or another. So bearing in mind that when you step back and you look at almost any section of society, whether it's people who are completely asleep, whether it's people locked in a spiritual bubble, whether it's people screaming out the truth about 9-11 on the street, whether it's Christians in fear of God, whether it's Muslims in fear of Allah, whether it's Jews in fear of Palestinians and Palestinians in fear of Jews, whether it's about students in fear of their teachers, whether it's about people in fear of their neighbours, it's all about fear. It's all about keeping the human race in a particular energetic state, by whatever means possible. And that's the energetic state that most human beings are typically in. Whether it's by refusal to deal with the system, face the system, whether it's by a refusal to leave your spiritual bubble, whether it's by a refusal to connect with the people around you, a refusal to get to know your neighbours. Even if you find yourself to be in the emotional state where you are in a perpetual need to collect trinkets, all of these things are generating the same energy. They're generating an energetic state of fear. And it is the energetic state of the planet itself, of this reality itself, which is having such a major effect on what the world is currently going through and what the human race is going through by default along with it. And you even see this mentality within sport, folks. What we see in sport quite often is people striving to achieve adoration from others. They want to be the one that stands up there on the number one box and raises their arms to the world and screams, Adore me. And for those other people on the team, there's a fear 
of not being that one who is adored. There's a fear of being the loser. Because quite often the coaches have instilled within the sports person the attitude that you must win. You must win. Give it all you've got and you must win. And then they also say that it's not about winning or losing, it's about playing the game. But if you do win, you get to be the one who is adored. So it's kind of like a big mental screw-up right from the beginning. But again, all of these things are done in order to keep the human race in a specific energetic state. So the question becomes why? What is the point of keeping the human race in a perpetual state of fear, competition and stress? What does it achieve? How does anybody possibly gain from this being done? Why do the powers that be go to such an extraordinary amount of effort to ensure that people never get the time or the inclination to truly look within? What is it that lies within that the powers that be really don't want people to be aware of? Well, within the human head, within the brain, between the two frontal lobes of the brain, there exists a small gland known as the pineal gland or the pineal gland, as some people prefer to pronounce it, as it is shaped somewhat like a pine cone. And I personally believe a lot of the effort that is gone to by the powers that be is to ensure that this gland remains inactive within the vast majority of human beings. Now, I did a radio show about this, I think it was early in 2009, where I talked pretty extensively about the pineal gland and about the need for the human species as a whole to attempt to reactivate or, as a friend of mine says, rejuvenate the pineal gland, how important it actually is, and how fluoride, most of the fluoride in water, the main effect of fluoride, the, the most important effect of fluoride, I believe, is that it serves to calcify the pineal gland and render it completely and utterly inoperative. Now, people such as Descartes refer to the pineal gland as the seat of the soul, and I have often spoken to you about the importance of the pineal gland. The pineal gland is, of course, what many Sufis and monks and spiritualists spend their lifetimes trying to activate. And the reason for this is because in activating the pineal gland, one can recode their DNA and access the many higher senses that are currently dormant within human beings. And it is, I believe, by activating these higher senses that mankind's true salvation will be found. I mean, I talk about a lot of the stuff that goes on with the world. I talk about a lot of the political situation simply because people need to be aware of it. But in doing so, I also try to present the information in a way that is empowering because I very much wish to present solutions when I present these problems to you. And I've often said to you that the solution to all of these problems really is to remove the fear that exists from within yourself in order that you may stand up against this system. And standing up against the system doesn't mean you have to stand up and do battle with it. You simply have to stand up and turn away from the system. Connect with your neighbours, put in gardens, turn away from the system, become a self-sufficient, self-responsible human being. This is something that we have very much been trained to avoid ever doing, folks. We've never been trained to be self-empowered. Our whole education system teaches us to be dependent upon the system, to be dependent upon others. They teach you a certain amount in as much as they teach you that you should fight people or possibly own a gun to protect yourself. And that's kind of right off on the tangent from what being self-responsible and self-sufficient and self-empowered actually is. Personally, I believe that one of the best things that you can do in your life is to get on with those around you. I think that is one of the major purposes of life. It's not a race to accumulate more stuff than anybody else. It's not a race to be more defensive than anybody else, able to fight off anybody else. And sure, I mean, it's good to be able to look after yourself, but it isn't what life's about. What life is about is about how many people you get along with, how many people you help along the way. I believe life is about how much you repair this 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 schism this this fracture 
that seems to exist within human consciousness. It's like the human consciousness is, is fragmented and shattered. And this shattered state of the human consciousness, this is what keeps the human consciousness in a state of fear, fear of everything, fear of each other. Even though it's a single consciousness, we are in fear of each other. Each frequency is in fear of all the other frequencies. I mean, what's that all about? How did that happen? It is this fear that blocks the pineal gland so much, that stops you being who and what you are. And the whole system is designed to generate fear. I've kind of gone off topic a little bit with all of this, but this is what I'm trying to point out to you, is how this system is designed to create fear. And it is this fear that is so detrimental to who and what you are, is so detrimental to the state of your DNA, so detrimental to your pineal gland, apart from things like fluoride and everything that they do to lock it off anyway, being in a state of fear most certainly helps to perpetuate it. And the system is designed to keep you in a state of fear, and it is your fear, this fear of the system itself, that prevents you from ever standing up against the system. Can you see how this works, folks? Now, when you can look beyond this fear, when you can perceive the human race as being a single consciousness and you look at the state of this consciousness, it's been shattered into 6.8 billion pieces and very often the focus of each individual piece is self-service at the expense of all the other pieces. That's very often what it is. Not in all cases, of course, but that's very often what it is. This is something that's always fascinated me, folks. And when I bring information to you on these shows and I talk about the problems that we face, the problems that are happening with the government and all these sorts of things, what I'm really trying to do is help repair these pieces, help repair this shattered consciousness. Because I believe that, as I've often said, all of the problems that we face are simply symptoms of the one problem the one problem that exists at the top that allows all these symptoms and that problem exists at the top because of this fractured state of the human consciousness this failure of humanity to simply connect with each other because it is by connecting with each other that all of these issues can be faced all the hardship on the planet can be faced all the pollution can be faced the encroaching police state can be easily faced and addressed all of these issues can be easily dealt with simply by the human race connecting with each other. 